everyone. Welcome to the Cube on the Ground presentation here in Palo Alto at VMware's corporate headquarters. I'm John Furrier, host of the Cube for a special on the ground presentation. Mark Lohmeyer, Vice President of Cl Products in the Cloud Platform Group at VMware, is joining me today. Welcome to the Cube on the Ground. Great, thanks. It's good to be here. So I was excited to see your name on the list because I wanted to drill into you on the AWS relationship, which is your part of your role mm -hmm. um, in that. Um, and you've You've been involved in vSphere and a bunch of other products, so you know the cloud strategy. So we're not going to talk about the misfires of the VMware's cloud strategy. Some will, other people in the press will like to focus on that. I was very bullish on the announcement. We had an exclusive uh, conversation with Pat Gelsinger mm -hmm. and Andy Jassy up in San Francisco a couple weeks, like six weeks ago. Mm -hmm. uh, saw Raghu there uh, and Terry Wise from AWS. Great relationship, and I'm, and, and, I, and I'm bullish on it because the culture of Amazon Web Services and mm -hmm. VMware are two geeky cultures. <laughs> right. Very, both have very active communities. Mm -hmm. Both speak loudly when things aren't going wrong. Mm -hmm. Both you guys as companies are customer centric, which Pat Gelsing and Andy, right. again, reiterated on stage. Um, and obviously this solidifies a hybrid cloud offering for you guys. So I want to get your thoughts. What's going on now? You had the announcement six, just six weeks ago, mm -hmm. which by the way, was a very stealth announcement. Mm -hmm. um, no one knew it was coming, something was going <laughs> on. And we were, even I couldn't even figure it out, but then it got broken out there. Mm -hmm. um, and then reInvent was just last week. Mm -hmm. So much happening last week. What, what's going on? What ha what's happened since six weeks? Sure. And what has come out of uh, reInvent last week in Vegas? Yeah, so um, you know, just taking a look back for a sec. If you look at the original announcement, and the way sort of Pat and Andy talked about it, uh, it was really this idea that, you know, hey, today customers are uh, struggling a bit because we're effectively forcing them to choose, right? They can either build a great VMware environment on-prem or they can build a great environment in the public cloud with AWS. What they were telling both of us is, hey, we don't want to have to choose between one of those two worlds. We want to be able to live in these two worlds simultaneously. And that was sort of really the core idea, I think, behind the partnership of enabling this new hybrid cloud solution for them. Uh, so that was sort of the high level concept, I guess. And I think, you know, after we did the announcement, one thing that's amazed me is just the level of positive customer reaction to what we're doing together. I think, you know, we were looking forward to, looking can forward you share, to it being- Can you share one? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, so I'll give you an example of um, a company that plays in the, uh, the travel industry. Uh, so they actually provide an IT platform for, uh, uh, for airlines. Uh, and they are a huge VMware customer today uh, the company's called Amadeus, right? So they're, they're a huge VMware customer today, and they've built all of their mission critical applications around VMware in their own private cloud, right? So uh, vSphere and other VMware solutions. And if you think about their environment, uh, obviously uh, uptime is critical, right? Uh, if that service goes down, people are missing, missing their flights. Uh, but they also have an eye to the future, and they're also sort of trying to think about, hey, how could I leverage the public cloud, right? So they're thinking about things like could I do disaster recovery to the public cloud? Or maybe I want to spin up a new application in a location, in a geography where I don't have a data center presence. Uh, and in the past, that was, as we were talking about before, is a bit of a tough decision, right? I could use my VMware environment on-prem, or I could try to do something totally different on the public cloud. Um, and so they're incredibly excited about this announcement. Because so they can do it on both. They, they the, can do it on both, They're yeah. very comfortable with VMware and they can move it here. And then you get the goodness of AWS on top of it. You got Whether it. it's some of the, the developer tools and a new, new services that they have. Yeah, yeah, and if you look at their teams, uh, I mean, these teams have spent uh, 10 years uh, learning how to use the VMware tools, uh, customizing their applications for these environments. And now they can basically leverage all of that with absolutely no changes on top of the AWS cloud. So I'm looking at my list here, I want to get your thoughts. You're in, since you're on the product side, I want to get the product perspective in terms mm -hmm. of how this has changed the, uh, the product roadmap because it's not like you guys are just endorsing it as a primary cloud, as mm -hmm. the number one market share, but you have other cloud providers. You have IBM and a bunch of others. Right. Um, but with respect to like storage and infrastructure, as that get, gets commoditized, um, how does that change the software you guys are writing? How does that change how you guys look at like things like Kubernetes or things like containers? So I think, I mean, one of the really interesting things about this partnership is that uh, we're actually bringing the value of the full VMware SDDC stack to the AWS uh, cloud. So uh, not only can they run their, continue to run their applications on vSphere with no changes, uh, but we're also delivering our um, enterprise class storage capabilities with vSAN as a service on AWS and all of our enterprise class networking and security capabilities with NSX as a service on top of the AWS cloud. Um, so we're actually giving them the, the rich set of capabilities across compute, network, and storage 
as a service is on the AWS cloud. Is the same code base that's running on both? This is the great thing, which is it's literally the same code base. Now we've done some things under the covers to make sure that we run in a very performant way on top of the AWS infrastructure. Because that's just more of an integration issue? More of an integration issue, and, and actually um, one of the great things behind the partnership is uh, both companies are investing in a pretty meaningful way and a deep engineering relationship to make sure that what we're delivering to our customers is really something uh, special and unique. We're not just sort of slapping this stuff together. There's some real hardcore engineering work uh, going into making this service great. So talk about it, reInvent, Amazon's web services. They had 32,000 people. I was calling it the center of the, of the yes. tech universe. It really is an intersection and an accumulation of, of all the different cultures out there. The VM world culture, mm -hmm. a bunch of other cloud native folks mm -hmm. and developers, and also a lot of the geeks and the DevOps guys, and obviously mm -hmm. software developers, mm -hmm. all coming together. You guys had a breakout with Pat, 1,000 mm -hmm. people in there. Share yes. that story that you were sharing to me before we uh, yeah, came on camera. Yeah, so, so this was great. So we, uh, we obviously had a breakout session on the VM world cloud and AWS solution. Uh, and first of all, there was always over a thousand customers in the room, which was always always great to see, kind of stadium style uh, seating. And uh, we basically asked, sort of show of hands, how many of you are VMware customers? You know, almost every hand goes up. How many of you are AWS customers? Almost every hand goes up. So I think it really speaks to the fact that it validates the the, yeah. the the customer centric thing that people are thinking. Well, why is Amazon and and why is Jassy and Galsinger dancing here? Why? Cause, and then their main message was customers are asking for it. So exactly. that's proof. Proof, proof positive at that point, yeah. Uh, any kind of anecdotal feedback coming in on that's hitting the product roadmap or inbound um, uh, data that you guys are you know, writing down and taking notes on in terms yeah. of what people are looking for specifically? So one thing that's really exciting to me is you know, uh, how customers are starting to think about how they would take advantage of this new service, right? It's one thing to sort of build the service, but it's another thing to sort of hear in a customer's own words, hey, I can do some really amazing things with this service that were never uh, possible before. And uh, it's interesting, probably talked to a few hundred customers at this point uh, since the announcement. And uh, you kind of hear uh, three, three big sort of ways that customers are thinking about it. You have one set of customers that's saying, look, uh, I'm going to continue to have a significant investment in my private cloud for a long, long time. But I want to take advantage of the public cloud for more um, extension-oriented use cases. So things like disaster recovery to the public cloud, um, or things like geographic capacity expansion. Uh, you know, it's very interesting to a certain set of customers. Any IOT? Uh, so, um, a bit, a bit, but I would say more at this point, they're more sort of IT-centric use cases around yeah. their existing enterprise apps. Um, but then you see a second group of customers where really they're saying, hey, um, I increasingly want to move more and more to the public cloud. Maybe I'm migrating specific apps, maybe I want to consolidate down my data centers. Um, and for them, this solution is incredibly compelling because they can leverage all of that tooling, all the skill sets they've built, um, all the things they've done to make their applications run great on VMware, they can now bring that all to bear on the, on the One cloud. One of the fascinating walkaways for me this year was um, kind of the epiphany of you know, connecting the dots in all 90 events we've gone to this year in theCUBE mm -hmm. is the horizontal pattern that we've seen across all of our events. Mm -hmm. One is cloud is happening mm -hmm. in a big way. Mm -hmm. Hybrid is absolutely the number one use case yes. with a lot more public cloud than people had thought. Yes. I mean, people were poo-pooing that, saying, hey, you know, public cloud's a joke. And I think uh, the other one was um, from James Hamilton's presentation mm -hmm. on Tuesday night, the level of how important Elastic is. Mm -hmm. you know, talking about how they're doing their own silicon, mm -hmm. how they're keeping the packets from touching anything outside their network. Mm -hmm. So this speaks to a scale mm -hmm. as, the, as the, the second point. Mm -hmm. So obviously big data is going to always going to be relevant, that's not an epiphany. But the relevance of public cloud and hybrid being real now, mm -hmm and scale. Mm -hmm. How does that affect your product strategy? Because now you have to compete with yeah. more scale like uh, products yeah, so scaling I mean, rapidly. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I think you sort of touched on two things there. One is the sort of hybrid, right? Mm -hmm. And how that's really coming to the forefront. And the second is the, the scale point. So I think on the, on the hybrid front, um, what we've been hearing from customers is in many ways, this new service we're building together is for the first time delivering to them what they would think of as a real hybrid architecture, right? It is literally... Um, it's a clear, straight, and narrow. They can see the path. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's pretty straightforward. You look at this thing and you say, oh, I can go into my VMware vCenter tools and I can see all my resources across my on-prem environment as well as now on top of the AWS cloud, like, and I can do everything consistently across those two worlds. And, and not only that, but all the other stuff I built on top of that, whether it's scripting or third-party tools or VMware's own uh, tools, uh, all of that just works consistently. So 
you know, for many of them, that is the way they think about hybrid. And it's the first time someone's really delivered that to them in, in, in the way that they think about it. Um, so absolutely, hybrid is, is key. Um, but you also touched on scale. And I think, I mean, to me, this is one of the things that's really exciting about this partnership. Because if you think about it, you know, AWS has made a huge investment in uh, data centers, regions, availability zones around the world. They've got 13 today. They've announced mm -hmm. they're adding five more uh, next year. Um, so their pace of investment and the scale of that environment uh, you know, continues to grow rapidly. Uh, from a VMware perspective and from our customers' perspective, they can now all take advantage of that. Right? We're going to enable the service across all of their regions uh, around the world. Yeah, I mean, I was saying to D Dave Vellante, who wasn't there, he says, what's your takeaway in mind? I'm like, well, it's kind of a radical view, um, but um, you know, this could be as big as Wintel, mm. except AWS is Intel and your Microsoft, because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you guys are going to be that software, but it's not a stack, it's kind of like not a great analogy, but mm -hmm. it's an interesting combination. If you look at the scale of the service, yeah. that Amazon's providing a service, not a product. Right. And when people buy products, they want to look at the speeds and feeds and kick the tires, mm -hmm. and they care about what's going on in, in mm -hmm. the product. Mm -hmm. No one cares what the service is doing, mm -hmm. as long as it works at mm -hmm. scale. So interesting new dynamics existing. Yeah, I, I think it's actually a great, it's a great analogy. I mean, I think, one thing we heard from, uh, again, from our customers is, you know, look, they, they love the VMware enterprise class capabilities, um, you know, leading capabilities across compute, network, and storage. Uh, and, but to date, we've been delivering that kind of as a product on-prem. Uh, so what they'd love to do is sort of combine those capabilities with the, what, what AWS gives them, which is a cloud service, right? And that's, so that's what we're doing. Together. So Mark, give us the update on what's going on with the product. What's, yeah. this, what you guys looking, what's your outlook for 2017? Yep. What are the top priorities? What are the PMs working on? Yeah. What's happening? Give us a, a peek inside. Blow by blow. Yeah, get, give us yeah. A, just, a, a, just yeah. a sense of the trajectory sure. on the product. Sure. And just timing of what people will expect when, where, the kind of orientation, so on and so yeah, forth. Yeah, absolutely. So, so, uh, so we're marching towards our initial uh, GA for mid-2017. Uh, full steam ahead towards that. Uh, significant investment from uh, both companies from an engineering perspective into creating this joint solution together. Um, and so there's unique things we're doing on the VMware side as well as AWS is doing on their side to, to make that a great service and really bring these capabilities together in a really meaningful way for our customers. Um, in advance of the initial GA mid-2017, uh, we're going through a customer a lighthouse program and beta program, and uh, the reaction of, to that has been uh, tremendous. So, um, so What far, qualifies as a lighthouse account? So the, the idea is that we would work very closely with a small uh, number of customers and uh, you know, our goal is to uh, really make sure we understand their environments, their requirements. We understand that early in the product development process, so we're lighthouse feeding those back folks into out the there service. Is like, it's a concept of you, know, you go to market, Lighthouse brings the ships into harbor, so they don't, you know, that kind of thing. Exactly. So <laughs> Lighthouse meaning that's their customers are going to work with closely. Hand exactly. Hand. Okay, sorry, go ahead. Exactly. Yeah, no, yeah, exactly. So work closely with, uh, we can learn from them, uh, then we're ensuring that we're delivering a great service that meets their, uh, meets their needs on day one. Um, so that's kind of with an initial very small group of customers. And then over time, we expand that out to a larger set of uh, beta customers, as you might imagine. Um, but the, the interest in that has been off the charts. So, is uh, it like a waiting list? I mean, just yeah, is there a the process? Pro <laughs> I mean, who, who runs this? <laughs> this you? is the challenge, this is, is the this? challenge. So we've got hundred, literally hundreds and hundreds of customers who have said, you know, I'm interested in being a Lighthouse or beta customer. Obviously, um, you know, small number that we can work with in a meaningful way. Are you guys doing any kind of outreach in the field? I mean, obviously the sales guys must be going crazy. Yeah, so it's, um, I mean, as you can imagine, it's really uh, caught on like, uh, like wildfire, uh, not only amongst the VMware uh, field sales teams, but also amongst the AWS sales teams. Uh, and a lot of customer interest in learning more, so those are all kind of coming back so to our So is it safe to say now. that VMware's now an arms dealer for <laughs> uh, cloud? I'm not sure if I would say an uh, arms dealer for cloud, but uh, but it's definitely exciting to be part of all of those discussions. Well, we're a meeting and we can say whatever we want, <laughs> yeah. but I, you're an arms dealer for the cloud. There you go. <laughs> um, always good to be Switzerland. Yeah. Um, Mark, thanks so much for spending the time here. On Thank the you. Ground. We are here on the ground at VMware's corporate headquarters in Great Palo Alto. I'm John Furrier with, with theCUBE. Thanks for watching.